You're watching Telecom TV from the Etsy 5G Network Infrastructure Summit. And I'm joined now by Dave Happy, who is Head of 5G at the UK Government DCMS 5G Mapping Project. Dave, welcome to Telecom TV. Now, 5G is introducing higher frequencies to the cellular industry, but what are some of the challenges of working at these millimetre wave bands? It's immediately clear that it's very, very difficult to enable you to get the kind of coverage and capacity that you expect at any kind of range. And it's simply to do with the laws of physics. Uh, low frequencies that people use today, it's not possible to convey as much bandwidth, but you can do it over a long distance. The kind of direction we're moving to with full fiber or deep fiber as it used to be called means that you can use these high frequencies where the ranges are shorter and the bandwidths are greater. But you have two problems. One of them is to do with what the signals can and can't do. They don't like leaves and buildings and things like this. And then you've got other problems to do with just how complicated it is to deploy that network. Mapping helps to make that possible more cheaply and easily. So tell me more about the mapping project that's underway on the south coast of the UK. OK, well, there's a project going in underway in Bournemouth at the moment, um, particularly nice south coast town. If you haven't visited, do come along. They'd welcome you with open arms. Um, but they're great because one of the difficulties was where could we actually test this? And in order to get the thing done, we wanted to uh, be able to fly our aircraft at the right height in the right time of year, i.e. later in the year. If you've been to the UK, you might have noticed that our weather is somewhat inclement and clouds make it rather more difficult to pick up the features that we want to map because we map in 3D and we create a digital trin of the real world but if we can't see it it's really difficult so what we've done in Bournemouth is we've overflown the area we've also used some mobile mapping which means drive some cars around with the relevant cameras and we've also sent surveyors out on the ground we tracked both the fixed assets and uh, the mobile towers mapped the whole lot and added to that things like the addresses of the people because there's a database called address base which enables you to work out more about how this can be done we've looked at the planning records and in particular what local councils or municipalities have, whether that data is accurate, in particular things like lamp posts. And are you collaborating with any other groups and bodies to do this work? That's a good point. In actual fact, we've been uh, working very, very closely with the 5G Innovation Centre at Surrey University and the United Kingdom Government's Met Office. Um, 5GIC have provided some fantastic knowledge to do with things like shield edge diffraction instead of just knife edge, uh, whilst the Met Office have provided a level of weather granularity and forecasting, which is about twice what we use within the UK, uh, which is quite unique. All of these things combined with our knowledge of things like line of sight, building types, what they're made of, trees, the whole gambit of factors added together we think can add to a quantum increase in the quality of the forecasting for helping people to deploy the optimum sites, where they should go, how they should plan out, what the options are. And you mentioned earlier things like um, or, uh, planning type issues. I recall in London when the Shard was built it did play havoc with certain radio links for a short period of time. Of course um, Ordnance Survey has the ability to have knowledge of how those kind of things can be anticipated to the benefit of users and in a sensible and cost-efficient way. So just how bad can signal interference be with millimetre wave? Well, because you're going to have problems with all kinds of factors and because we haven't actually deployed them on a wide scale yet, we don't know. One thing we can say for certain is that if you haven't got decent mapping, you're never going to find out. It all helps to chart a future course for the cellular industry. Dave, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.